We learned a lot, uh, both for the for for our own use in in how to deal with those cars being as low as they are. That car particularly um, caught my attention. It wasn't just a, a, a passing thought. Let's build a 400 mile an hour car. There was a lot of thought that had gone into it, but until they came into the wind tunnel, they they were. It was a best guess of what was going on. When we got it in and started testing. Uh, we found that uh, it was it was very close to what they thought it was going to be in most of the numbers. There were a few surprises, I think. This particular car had a had a very low coefficient of drag, which is what you're after. That that tells you really the efficiency of the shape, how that reacts in the air, and and then that coefficient of drag translates into uh, mathematically into everything else that's going on the lift the drag, the side forces. Uh, so when you get it out in the free air, it's going to do what, what you already know it's going to do because you've been in a wind tunnel and you know what those forces are. Uh, the driver, uh, Mike, had, uh, had, had a lot of experience in the car and he knew that the steering was a little bit squirrely at high speeds and talking with him, there are some safety concerns. So by bringing it into the tunnel here, they were able to confirm what they already thought and they could put it in hard numbers in actual pounds of, well, how many pounds are on the back wheel when we're going 400? How many pounds are on the front wheels? And, and they found that they had a lot of lift in the front, which would account for, it answers a lot of questions that they already had. So with only the handful of people that have ever gone 400 miles an hour, uh, they were able to learn a lot here and that'll translate into not only more speed for them, but a safer car uh, for the driver, and uh, it's better for, for, uh, for racing.